I almost died from a cough. And this is that story. Um, okay, yeah, there's no better way to say this. So one night, June 2017, I am masturbating in bed and uh, I start coughing up blood. I'm like, have I ever coughed up blood before? No. Is this okay? Probably not. So I call 911 and they send an ambulance. One of the EMTs, when they're checking me out, like presses on my stomach and she's like, is your stomach always this distended? And I'm like, okay, I don't have a beach bod right now, but like, it's a little insulting. I'm at the ER and the doctor asks me like all the standard questions. Am I a smoker? Have I been sick? Like what's been going on? And at the end of his questions, he asked me if there's anything I want to tell him that I think might be relevant. I'm like, okay, uh, there's no way that this is related, but I was masturbating. Uh, is that part? And he's like, no, there's no way that has nothing to do with it. But he was very polite about it. So they give me an x-ray and let me go. I'm walking out of the hospital and the doctor comes running out after me, yelling my name, saying that the attending physician saw my x-ray and wants to do a CT scan. So they do a CT scan, they see a cloudy patch on my lung, and they decide to quarantine me under the suspicion that I have tuberculosis. They keep me quarantined in the ER for a few days, they run some tests, the tests come back negative, I don't have tuberculosis, so they let me go. I'm feeling good, I go get Popeyes for lunch, cause hey, I'm alive and Popeyes is delicious. And then later that afternoon, I go to an open mic, cause I hustle, baby. On the way to the open mic, I call my grandmother. I'm very close with my family, and we didn't want to worry my grandmother, so I just wanted to call her to let her know that, yes, I had been in the hospital, uh, but I was okay. And as I'm on the phone with my grandmother, I get this rattling feeling in my chest, and I start coughing up blood again. Like, a lot of blood. Like, more than you're thinking right now. Okay, I'm freaked out. I see a friend walking into the open mic. I sort of flag her down, uh, cause I'm scared and I don't wanna be alone. Um, we get into a cab. We go to another hospital. The ER doctor tells me that unless I'm coughing up like a cup of blood, it's not an emergency. There's nothing they can do for me it pretty much feels like an emergency. Have you ever seen ER Doctor, a character in a movie coughing up blood? They tend not to make it, but it is enough of a concern that they make me wear a mask the whole time. So they don't wanna get sick, but I don't know what's going on. No one knows what's going on. Thursday afternoon, he sends me out into the streets of New York to just cough up blood on my own. Hey, have a great weekend. Friday, June 16th. My mom set up a couple doctor's appointments for me in Manhattan. The first one, an internist, he tells me there's a flesh-eating bacteria in my lungs, but that I'm pretty much okay, and I should just go about my life until we can figure out what's going on. I'm a little reassured. So between my first appointment and my second, I decide to go back home to Brooklyn to pack a bag to go and stay with my parents. And while I'm on the train, I feel that rattling in my chest again. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna start coughing up blood again. But because I'm polite, I open up the doors in between the train cars so I can cough up blood onto the tracks. I keep coughing blood even as the train pulls into the station. So I get off the train and I find a trash can on the platform and I just post up. No one stops to help me or ask if I'm okay, but I don't blame them. What would you do if you saw someone coughing up blood? It's like more than the last time. So each time it's more and more blood. When it's over and I catch my breath, I take a few selfies, cause I'm a millennial, and I call my mom and I tell her I don't wanna die standing on the train platform. She tells me I'm not going to, and I tell her, you can't say that, you don't know that. I keep coughing up blood and everyone's telling me I'm fine. How is this fine? I go home, I pack a bag, and I make it to my second doctor's appointment. I had taken a bunch of pictures on the train platform to show to the doctors. So I show this doctor a bunch of pictures of blood that I've coughed up and he's like, why are you showing me these pictures? I'm a doctor. I know what blood looks like. And he tells me we're gonna do a procedure called a bronchoscopy and they're gonna do it first thing Monday morning. Why is medicine a nine to five? Coughing up blood is 24 seven. He tells me to go home to my parents' place. So now for the third time, a medical professional has told me to go home. So I'm like lying on the couch. That day was the day that my sister's boyfriend was planning on coming over to my parents' place to ask for their blessing to propose to my sister. It's a great time, everyone's celebrating, sipping wine, eating cheese. Meanwhile, I'm lying on the couch wondering whether or not I'm gonna die. I reach for the brie and someone's like, hey, maybe we could make a plate for him so he doesn't have to touch the food with his 
coughing up blood ass fingers. Anyway, party's over. Um, I go to sleep. About 2 a.m. I wake up to another rattling feeling in my chest. I call for my parents. My mom comes in with a bowl and I just start coughing up blood into this bowl. And I don't stop for like a while. And I just keep coughing up blood and my mom is there with her hand on my back telling me it's gonna be okay. And I'm mad at her because this doesn't feel okay. When it's over, there's enough blood to fill up like multiple bowls. So now I understand you can't tell your son that you don't know if he's gonna die tonight. And I'm grateful that my parents were there for me and were strong for me and put me at ease because there wasn't really anything to do. The next morning, I wake up with a fever of 103. My parents call the doctor. They tell us it's time to go to the hospital. They admit me to the pulmonary ICU, and I'm like, yes, finally, something is happening. They're at least taking this seriously. They just observe me that night. Saturday, I stay in the hospital. Sunday afternoon, there's a doctor talking to me and my parents. They've done another test for tuberculosis. It comes back positive. Five minutes later, I'm in the OR. And they decide to put me under general anesthesia. They send a thingy up through my groin to just try to stop the bleeding, but apparently the infection was so advanced at that point. So they put me in a coma and removed the infected part of my lung. Four days later, I wake up from a medically induced coma. The doctors are going with tuberculosis. When I graduated from college, I took a job teaching English in China. Then I sort of backpacked around Asia for about six months after that. The going theory is that I picked up tuberculosis somewhere in Asia and then it sat dormant in my system for about four years. The CDC has basically declared me legally gross. You have to report tuberculosis because uh, it can be an epidemic. So the doctors are ready to release me on like a Friday after afternoon, but the CDC has to approve my release, and they don't work on the weekends. Go figure. And meanwhile, by the way, my family, my friends, they're all visiting me. Everyone has to wear masks. I'm also grateful that I was on my parents' insurance, by the way, because having tuberculosis, if you have it like me, can cost around like $300,000. So I know a lot of people in my position wouldn't have gotten the care that I got, and would be much worse off. So I've got like the weekend, the CDC hasn't yet approved my release. One day, I think it's a Saturday, I go to the bathroom, I've got my phone, I've got the Wi-Fi password. I'm pretty stoked that I'm alive, so I decide to give myself some celebratory me time. And uh, I forget that I have a wireless heart monitor strapped to my chest. And the thing about wireless heart monitors is that they can't tell the difference between an orgasm and a heart attack. So the nurses come rushing in, they're banging on the door. I'm like, ah, uh, it's occupied. They're like, we know, this is your hospital room. I'm like, I'm having a bowel movement. They're like, okay. I can't believe I'm talking about off in a BuzzFeed video. Monday, the CDC comes to my room. Not only do they make me basically promise to stay at home, they send a representative to come watch me take pills every day. That's how serious this is. I forgot to mention that I was in the hospital during my parents' anniversary, Father's Day, and my sister and her soon-to-be fiance's housewarming party. It really ruined a lot of good times for everyone. Despite everything that happened, that summer was like the best summer of my life. My sister did get engaged in Italy. I was there, it was beautiful. I took an amazing bike trip with one of my best friends in Montana right before our other best friend's wedding. I stood by his side as he married the love of his life and I looked super hot doing it. Cause here's the thing, when you get tuberculosis and you're in the hospital for like two weeks, you lose a bunch of weight. Um, yeah, I almost died, but I also got a lot of thirst traps out of it.